Hi, this is Andrew Twidwell, owner of ABT Plumbing Electric Heat and Air. Once again, with the show, you got this. It's a show of DIY do's and don'ts. I'm here with Rosalie Brand. Well, virtually here with Rosalie Brand. She's down in LA, and I'm here in our Auburn office. Um, and we're here to talk about DIY do's and don'ts. But we were kind of talking off air about, you know, we kind of do this little banter beforehand to try to figure out what we're going to talk about. And we came up with our pets. So. <laughs> We both, as some of you listeners may remember, both of our dogs died on the same day, our older dogs on the same day this summer. Um, and then I still have another dog and you have, you have a cat now? Uh, we have a cat that, um, yeah, named Captain Jack Sparrow. And right. when you, when you think of Jack Sparrow and you think of the weird movements and the being drunk all the time, perfect name, perfect name. <laughs> And we just nice. got my daughter a cat a week and a half ago. And she, perfect cat for her. Doesn't move much. Lays around a lot. Um, likes to play every once in a while, but then wants to be on her lap. So it's, it's perfect. And okay. we got our male. So, you know, he's really, you know, um, like a, a likened it to like what lions do. They just, you know, the male lions just kind of lay around and do nothing. And the females are out doing stuff. And the, apparently that's kind of a thing with, with felines in general. So, um, and maybe even with um, homo Mammals. sapiens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did used to work at a zoo, and right. you knew that. Yeah. And um, it was interesting because the male lion, really, you're right. Like, they literally basically did nothing all, yeah. all the time. They sleep like um, 15 to 20 hours a day or something ridiculous. Like 20, like 20 uh, about 20 on average. And, yeah. um, and then the interesting thing is that I think I told you this, my, in my office, you could hear the about three or four every, I think it was about four o'clock every day, the lion would roar. Like it was, it was yeah. like on an alarm almost. And, and the, the windows in my office would shake because that's how, I mean, you can hear a male lion yeah. roar from, they say miles. I don't know anything about that, but I know yeah. that it, it, it's intense, but it's funny because this thing sleeps all day and then it's like, oh, I'm awake. I'm feeling a little peckish. Oh, and it everybody. roars. Yeah. Here I am. Crazy. Yeah. Attention get her. Attention get her. Yeah. Yeah. So she should, have, she little... should have fun. Yeah. She's having, she's having a great time. It's, it's been perfect too. Cause it's the first time she's lived by herself. So it gives her a little something to focus on. Um, so it's been good. Um, yeah. Cause her roommate left and, went back to grad school. So it's been a little hard for her because she's been living with this roommate for seven years. Uh, wow. Yeah, a long time. So it's like an era, right? You know, whenever roommate leaves and you're like... Especially you're so at her age. You know, yeah. at her age. You wow. know. So yeah, I mean, they've been living together for a long time since 18. So anyway, um, but anyway, so we were talking also about our, our dog. So we've got one dog left. Well, one dog left. We have we had two dogs and we lost one. Um, they were both old. The, our last dog, he was 17 years old. So, I mean, he had a really good life. You know, he was found on the streets of San Leandro, um, and then we rescued him as a puppy. So, um, and then our second dog, we um, adopted a puppy because we lost our Labrador. And I said, well, we can get kind of a medium dog if it's, it'll be really good for travel. And the kids had never had a puppy. So, we're like, we'll get a puppy. And we, um, Betty got on the, the interweb and found a collie Labrador mix. So we went to Stockton to pick up this collie Labrador mix. And I we remember got him that. Yeah, no, he's a pit bull. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's 12 now and he is, he's a handful. Um, so he, we had some Christmas presents that we hadn't given out yet. My son had brought some Christmas presents up for my mom. But with COVID and the flu and everything, we hadn't seen her. So they were sitting in our in our house on the floor. And one of the presents that he brought up from Mexico was a mug with 500 kilograms of chocolate for making hot chocolate. And I heard some rustling downstairs. And I went downstairs and he had eaten pretty much the whole thing. He left maybe mm -hmm. a grain. So, um, yeah, 490 nine grams of chocolate that's not a really good thing for a dog and it was late so we started doing a bunch of research it was like seven or eight o'clock so we would have taken to the to the emergency vet and we're like and eh, we you know we had another dog that ate a pound of chocolate covered coffee beans and she was fine she threw it up 
Um, so we're like, yeah, he's just going to throw it up. You know, he's, he's pretty healthy, but he is um, 12 years old. But he is, you know, he's a, he's a mix. He's a pit bull mix, so he's pretty hardy, right? Um, lo and behold, yeah, he throws up, and then he throws up again, and then he throws up again. Every 15 to 20 minutes from 9, till, 9 p.m. till 7 a.m. And at one point, so he's a spoiled dog. You know, we're, we're parents, you know, dog parents that have no kids at home anymore. So, you know, he gets a lot of attention and he sleeps on the bed with us. So he throws up on the bed like three times. And at one point, um, I don't know, maybe about two o'clock in the morning, maybe it was only 12 o'clock by that time. I can't remember. It's all, it's all vague to me now. Um, he stands up and looks at us and throws up in between our pillows. And I'm like, I just jumped out of bed because, you know, whenever a dog throws up, that's what you do, right? You, and you're in bed, you jump out of bed. And especially when they're throwing up next to your face and on your pillow. So I'm like, I'm out. We're sleeping upstairs. We're sleeping on the couch, you know? So we, we go upstairs and I need, I'm like, we need hard surfaces. We need to be able to keep them off the bed. We need to keep them off the couch. So we took them upstairs and yeah, every 20 to 30 minutes throughout the evening, throughout the night, he was throwing up and, um, he was fine the next day, you know, he was a little messed up, but yeah. But um, yeah, and on the next day, then he started, you know, we take him for a walk and then of course he wants to eat more crap, right? <laughs> wants to eat everything. You're like, good dude. <laughs> Couldn't keep breakfast, breakfast down or dinner down for a couple of days, but um, he's all better now. But yeah, the joys of having a, a pet. And I, at this point at, at like, I don't know, I, it could have been three o'clock in the morning. It could have been nine o'clock in the morning. I don't remember. But I tell my wife, like, I'm done. I don't want any more pets. I don't want any more, you know, just you and me and maybe some plants. That's all I want to take care of now. I'm done. <laughs> as soon as this dog is gone, which could happen anywhere from now till, you know, he could live to 17 for five years. I don't know. Um, and we're not, you know, but we have, <laughs> we have had some thoughts of like, wow, what would happen if we just put him down? Not that we could do that, but you know, you have those thoughts, right? Cause you're just like, oh, we can't do anything. Oh, and then, oh, this is even better. Oh, then he um he ate one of her. Oh, then he's also got into eating shoes. So he ate my son's. We Betty brought him bought for Christmas. Bought him a brand new pair of like leather chukas or whatever, and he ate those before we could give it to him. And then two days after he threw up, so this weekend, um, he ate one of Betty's favorite pair of boots, La Can Canada or La Canada Canadian or whatever. Um, I don't know. Four five hundred dollar pair of boots gone. They were like not even six months old, and these were those things where she saved up and really wanted them really bad. Her favorite boots, and yeah, ate it all, all the leather on it. And we also ate my um, when we went to Italy. I bought a, a notebook last two years ago. I bought a a, a leather bound notebook in Florence. It was like my favorite little notebook. He ate that too. So yeah, he's gotten into eating some leather since Grissom's passed. Yeah. Well, so um, as we're turning into vet tales, um, I, real quick before we transition into DIY, because um, we have a fun game queued up, I want to say with all of my dog experience, you might want to look at, um, this sounds like when my dog would go up to the trees and start eating the bark. Um, right. And th they said something about him needing like fiber in his diet, but I think there was also something about the sensation in their mouth. They really like how certain things feel. And now right. he's got a feel for the leather. And I think you guys might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Well, we, we, we've done a bunch of research and we started doing some different things around the house. So, and then, yeah, we're, we're, we're changing things up around um, the house and also keeping him out of areas that he can get into trouble. We just, you know, it's kind of all of a sudden and like, you know, oh my gosh, he's eating shoes now. This is great. It, it's like raising children all over again, except my kids never ate shoes. But yeah, I'm nope. with you. I totally get it. <laughs> my kids right. only glue, right? But <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's transition this um, train wreck into, yes. um, we came up with this, we, yeah, we came up with this idea since we didn't have a, a guest this week, we thought, well, let's play a game. And one of my favorite questions is I'll blow up Andrew's phone because I will randomly be like, Andrew, is this do it myself or is this hire a pro and so um based on that <laughs> we came up with a list of hey is this a diy thing or should you call a pro 
So um, kind of put together some ideas around plumbing, electrical, heating, and air. I don't know how many we'll get to, but round one, Andrew, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. So if I wanted to fix a leaky faucet, would I go pro or DIY? Um, so again, we're going to, we're going to say that a, a DIY person has some tools, has some, has some knowledge of how to fix things. Um, this is kind of, you know, for entertainment yeah. purposes only. Pardon? For entertainment purposes only. For entertainment for purposes only. Yes. So, you know, I mean, if you, if you've never fixed anything in your life, yeah, call a pro. But if you fix some things in your, in the past, yeah, fixing a faucet is relatively easy, especially these days, because most of our, um, faucets now have cartridges. So you can pull said cartridge out, turn the water off, obviously, and then pull the handle off and then pull the cartridge out or the stem and then take it to the hardware store and get the, the matching part. Um, but with that, getting the handle off sometimes can be a nightmare. And I've had experiences where it's taken me multi -visit, multiple visits to try to figure out how to take a handle off. Because a lot of faucets have like hidden screws or things, or some of them you push on and you literally have to pull off, pull them off with some force. And if you don't know that, um, you know, it can be really hard. So figure out what you've got first before you go into it. If you've got an obvious Allen wrench or screw, you can pull it out. Those kind of things, then that would be a higher level. Um, yeah. So give it a shot. If it's an old school one with um, rising stems and washers, I would leave that to a professional. And to be honest, if it's that old, we're talking about a faucet that's probably 30 to 50 years old. Yeah, put a new one in. They wear out. Things wear out. Okay. Okay. Um, the next one is probably pretty obvious because you know you know my favorite way to handle this. Right. Um, unclogging, unclogging drains. Is that a DIY or do I need to call a pro? So if it's a slow drain, your favorite, vinegar and baking soda, a lot of times will take care of it. They'll just break things up and clear the drain. So you got a shower, bathtub, um, bathroom sink, those kind of things. Kitchen sinks can be a little bit harder, um, but those kind of where they you get like soaps and other things that kind of congeal inside of there, um, the baking soda and vinegar will, will break those up and help clear the drain. If it's like a clogged kitchen sink where you put something down the disposer and it's clogged the sink, that's one of those things where you might have to pull some pipes out, pull the P-trap out, see if it's stuck in there. But if it's stuck in the pipes, you're going to need a cable. And um, once you start getting into the cabling and things, some people know how to use a hand snake. But, I mean, we have our our, drain, our sink machines cost over $1,000. So, you know, I can't tell you to go out and buy a $1,000 tool that you're going to use once. Um, we've got the tools to be able to take care of it. So... If it's a big persistent kind of thing, yeah, hire a professional. If you can also, one of those, you know, bathroom, lavatory, tub, shower, you can also try a zip it. Um, because a lot of times those are just hair. And with a zip it mm -hmm. tool, and that's that tool that's that plastic rod that's got some like teeth on it, kind of like a, a, a shark, a, um, a sword shark with the, the saw shark rather. Um, yeah, that'll take care of it. And you pick those up for like under 10 bucks. I've seen them online for a dollar. So. Okay. Um, next, I want to talk to you about, this is a trick question because this is about not the whole unit. What about replacing toilet components? Yeah. So um, we've, we've talked a lot about that. So toilets, repairing a toilet is kind of my nemesis. I've had more callbacks and our guys have had more callbacks on toilet repairs than any other single product in any plumbing arena. Um, and the main issue is that flapper, the, the flush valve, the thing that actually lifts up and lets the water leave the tank and flush the toilet. Those can be re really easy to replace, but if you put the wrong one in, if you put a non-OEM uh, generic flapper in there, there's a good chance it's gonna leak. So if you do replace a flapper, make sure you pull the flapper and take it to the hardware store and get the OEM product. And that'll, you know, light, the likelihood of you being able to, to repair it goes up exponentially if you use an OEM product. Um, replacing a handle, easy. The one thing to remember about toilet handles is they have a reverse thread. So that can be a little um, daunting to people. So it literally, it's not righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. It's lefty-loosey, righty-tighty. Or does it need to, did I say it the right way? Anyway, it's different. It's the, literally the opposite. 
So um, that can be confusing for people, but it's a pretty easy thing. The hard part though, is then uh, putting the chain or um, linkage between the flapper and the handle. You wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of slack in that. If it's really tight, it'll hold the flapper open and it'll leak and your, your toilet will run. So um, those are kind of those little funny things. And then in terms of like a fill valve, um, that's a higher level part because um, you can flood your house if you do that wrong. Um, and I've had, I've flooded houses because of that. I flooded a, when I was 18, when I was a, a, um, a journey or not, when I was an apprentice, I went out and trimmed out a, a brand new remodel that we did. It was one of the first projects and my employer did not tell me how to do it. And cause he just thought I knew what I was doing. And I kind of knew what I was doing just enough to be dangerous. And it was an upstairs bathroom. And I put, I replaced the, I put a new um, supply line on and this, it was old school cone washer, something we don't use anymore. Um, and the, the supply line blew out when I was at lunch, flooded the entire building. They had just remodeled everything and I ruined, I don't know, probably did $50,000 worth of damage. So yeah, I mean, it was intense. That was a bad one. He didn't fire me, but yeah. Rightly so, maybe. Yeah, I learned a lesson. <laughs> it was an expensive lesson from the employer, but yeah. $50,000. It lesson. is one of those things where you can do it. And I've also had some small, small leaks that, that um, cost, us, cost me some money. When I first started the company, I had a small leak on a fill valve that um, so they still had carpets in the bathroom. And I had to pull the carpets and the padding and, and fix all that. Um, so you can do some damage with those. So you know, be, you can do it, but be warned. Yeah. Okay. A fifty thousand dollar warning works for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right. Now this is something that um, I'm going to say because I see people getting so confused about how if someone is good at this, they get it done really quickly, and um, if you are not good at this, it can be an all day thing. Installing a garbage disposal. Would you watch YouTube and do it yourself or would you just have the pro come in and just knock it out? To be honest, at this point in my life, I'd probably hire a pro. Well, you write a check for everything. I know. Yeah. I mean, disposers <laughs> are one of those things that are relatively easy to install, but getting the disposer onto the flange and yeah. getting that flange set, um, if you haven't done it a few times, is really hard because the disposer is heavy. And you got to lay on your back and you've got to mm -hmm. push it up there and, and get it on it with my 56 year old body and my bad back. Um, it hurts to do those sort of things. So it's one of those things you technically can do if you're still, if your body's still in good shape and you can, um, you can flex and you don't mind climbing underneath the sink and ruin your back, go for it. But um, it's one of those things that, yeah, you can do it. The one thing to remember though, is if you do you have a dishwasher, there's a little plug that's um, that's cast inside of the drain that you hook up the drain for the dishwasher to the disposer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and there's it's literally if you don't pop that out, um, the water the dishwasher is not going to drain because there's it's literally clogged because it's put there because not everybody has a dishwasher. So um, you got to hammer that thing out. So watch the video on how to do that. It's a screwdriver and a hammer. It's really easy, but can't tell you how many times I've gotten called out after somebody installed the dishwasher or disposer. And I had to, all I did was drop it and pop that thing out. And, you know, they had, they were like 99% done. It was just that last little bit that they didn't know and messed up. And then I got to charge them to, to do that. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to skip over to electrical really quick. Cause we spent quite a bit of time on vet tails. Um, so would you, and I know how you feel about electricity. So knowing that we're both big proponents of not messing with electricity. Most of these, I'm assuming you're going to say hire someone, but um, replacing a light fixture. Yeah. Replacing a light fixture is one of those things that's relatively easy because um, it's essentially wire nets. Um, one thing, but you know, it's, it's also, I'm always going to say, you know, again, this is for entertainment value and electrical is dangerous and it's lightning in a bottle and you can die. Um, and you can cause fires with it, but it, uh, changing, changing light fixture is usually relatively easy. Um, it can get a little wonky if the previous, if the, the box is installed incorrectly or too deep. So you may not have screws that can actually mount it. Um, I've had, and then there's some configurations that work with certain boxes and don't work with other boxes. So 
I would say, you know, 90% of the time, yeah, I would just do it myself. I would do it. Um, the other thing I would do is don't use the little orange wire nuts that come supplied with the fixture, throw those in the garbage, buy solid, good wire nuts. And also when you do install it, twist the wires together. Don't just rely on the wire nut to hold it together. Literally ma manually twist them together with uh, Lyman's pliers so that you have a mechanical um, fixture or mechanical attachment. Um, and then the wire nut, all the wire nut does is cover the wire. You know, it's not there to hold the wires together. You got to twist the wires together to make sure they'll hold together. Okay. But yeah, hire uh, a professional if you've got any queasiness about it because you can die. And also you're climbing up on the ladder. And I know we had um, one of my past employers many, 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 many years ago was talking somebody through on how to fix something. And she was up on a ladder. She was, you know, not older, but, you know, middle-aged woman. And she fell off the ladder and broke her hip while she was on the phone with her plumber. So, um, oh, that's yeah. Fun. It's, okay. yeah, it's dangerous. Okay. Um, so probably have a time for at least one more, cause then you're yeah. going to talk about some amazing specials we have, but, um, last one we'll do then is, so how do you feel about installing a ceiling fan? Um, again, it's like a light fixture. It's relatively simple, but you got to make sure you have the right box. So, um, if that box is not intended to hold, 10 pounds or five pounds, however heavy your, your ceiling fan is, do not do it. Um, I would probably say um, I would not do that because you could you could hook it up and then all of a sudden that thing just falls from the ceiling and breaks your glass coffee table or lands on somebody's head. Um, those things are heavy once they're moving. And then also, you know, if it's off balance, it can do some damage. So I would, it's one of those things I would just hire a professional to do that one. Okay, sounds good. So, believe it or not, that's the end of our game. Um, we will probably return to this next week. Okay. You win all the points. Um, Andrew, talk about some things, some prizes for our community. What are we offering special right now? Okay, so specials we've got going right now are forty nine dollar electrical inspection. If you have not had your house, in, uh, if you haven't had a professionally licensed electrician inspect your electrical system in the last twenty years. And if you've done any work on the house and you haven't had it inspected by a licensed electrician, take advantage of this. 49 bucks. We'll come in and, and make sure everything's safe. Electrical, electrical is dangerous and it wears out. Oh, those little That little sparking you hear when you pull the switch um, or that when you put an outlet in or plug into an outlet, that's lightning bolts. It can cause a fire. It's scary. Um, so definitely take advantage of that. We've also got a water heater flush and plumbing inspection for $49 and HVAC safety inspection tune-up for $49. We also have the $97 drain cleaning special for any accessible clean-out residential house. Um, that's one drain, 97 bucks. If we can't clear it, it's free. A couple other things that are coming up. Um, we've, we're running a, our, our ABT gives back. We've reinstated that. We haven't done it since COVID started, so we've reinstated that. So we're in the process of taking information for for the um, nonprofits that want to be, that we want to put into the competition. Um, and I think that ends this month, right? Just in a week or so. so Nominations, we'll, yeah. Uh, nominate, no, nominate now through the end of January. Yeah, not vote. Nominate your, your favorite nonprofit in Nevada County. Um, and then the last thing we've got is we'll be at the Cal Expo Home Show on February 2nd and 4th. Come and take a look. Step on by and ask some nice questions. We'll have technicians there as well as Scott Costa, who's got a lot of information and we'll be getting stuff away. So with that, I think that's our show. Thanks for listening and we'll catch you guys next week. Bye.